lottery question that we just had there. If you're using fractions or anything, if you're using fractions to calculate something here, okay, well, let's actually keep it simple so we won't use the lottery thing. Let's use this. This situation here, if you're rolling, um, you're rolling some dice here and you want to know what's the chance you're going to, if you're trying to guess the outcome of uh, rolling a dice, rolling a, a dice three times, what's the chance you're going to guess exactly two out of three rolls? You could do it this way, the way we've done before, and count all the different outcomes. What's your chance on any one individual roll here? Probability of guessing, let's say, correct, which we'll just use a C here. This is correct, capital C. What, what's your chance of guessing it correct on any one single roll here? Well, if you're going to guess, if you say, I think it's going to be a 5, what's your chance of being right on that? You're not speaking very loudly. One out, of six. one out of six, right? You got a one in six chance of guessing it correctly if the thing's a fair or die. So we want to know now what's the chance of getting it um, getting it correct two out of three rolls. If you if you guess it, let's say you wanted to use fractions like you've done before. So if you said, well, I could get the first one correct. I got a one in six chance of getting the first one correct, and I want exactly two out of three. So then I could get the second one correct, and then I could get the last one incorrect. That's going to give me the chance of getting that to happen. Does that mean that the chance of getting exactly two out of three rolls is this? Is that what that means? This is not all of the ways, right? This is one particular pathway here. That's getting the first two correct and then getting the incorrect one. It could happen this way, right? You get this correct, this correct, and then this incorrect. That's this number right here, right? Getting it correct is 1 and 6. Getting it not correct is 5 and 6. And then getting it correct and then getting this incorrect. This is 5 out of 216, that one right there, multiplying those three fractions. But that's not the only pathway. If you, if you try to answer this by just saying, well, 1, 6 times 1, 6 times 5, 6, this is one particular case, right? Okay, it's not all of the cases. You got to think about how many different cases there are. How many different cases are there? How many different ways can you get exactly two different ones correct? Yeah, there's three different ways, right? If you think about it, you can get correct, then correct, and then get the one wrong. Or you can do this, then get the one wrong, and then get this. Or you can get the wrong one first and then get the last two correct. There's three ways this can happen. If we want to do this, you've got to include all three of those ways. So the other two ways are you could get the first one correct, then get the incorrect one, and then this. So that's one of the other ones. Or you can get the last one here, which is you can get the first one incorrect and then get these two correct. There's three different ways this can happen. What's the probability going to be for these other ones here? Do we have to calculate it again? This is like 5, 6 times 1, 6 times 1, 6. What is that going to give me? The same number, right? It's going to give me the same thing. If all of these are independent, if each roll is independent, all I'm doing is moving these fractions around. I'm just putting this one after that. Or I'm putting this one after this. I'm not changing the... Um, I'm not changing the outcome in each one. Each one is going to have the same thing. This is going to be 5 out of 216 as well because it's just going to be 1, 6, then the 5, 6, and then the 1, 6. So you have, you have three different things that are all the same, just rearranging those fractions. So what's the shortcut? Well, what's the, first of all, what's the, uh, what's the answer here? For any one case, it's 5 out of 216. So what is it? If we just say, what's the chance of getting two correct out of out of three rolls? Is it five out of two sixteen? It's not, right? What is it? It's all of these added together. So what is it? Fifteen out of two sixteen, right? Fifteen. All three cases. Or what would be the shortcut for this that you learned in grade two? <laughs> Repeatedly adding is the same as doing what? Taking one of them and multiplying it by 3. This is the number of ways it can happen. 
This is the probability for one of the ways. A lot of you have already said this. Well, do I really have to calculate each case individually? Or can I just figure out one of them and multiply it? Several people have already asked that in some of the things you've already been doing. If each of the ways is the same, well, no, don't figure it all out. In this one, there's three cases. If there was 100 cases, you certainly wouldn't want to do each of the 100 cases individually and then add them all together. If you knew they're all the same and there's 100 of them, figure out one of them and multiply it by 100 or whatever it happens to be. This is essentially the binomial, using the binomial theorem to calculate probabilities. It's thinking about how many different ways can this happen and then figure out the, the probability for one of those ways. So this is what this says here. This probability can be thought of the number of pathways that have two correct answers. That's three. There's three pathways times the probability that of a specific pathway. That's, that's any one of those. It's the number of ways times the probability for one of the ways. If we were going to do more here, you can think about what this number represents. You can think about this as um, out of the three roles, I want to choose how many ways can I get two correct? And then times the probability of probability of one of the ways. That's what this is, right? It's saying number of ways getting getting two correct. Okay, number of ways of getting two correct times probability of one of the ways. So you can just say, well, it's three C two times. I know I'm going to have a uh, one sixth. And I'm going to have it there twice, right? One six times one six. And I know I'm going to have this here once. That's the binomial theorem, basically. We're going to use it for uh, something that's a larger number here. I don't want to make the tree diagram, right? This is very tedious. You're going to have six levels to it because you're doing six rolls. Think about the probability of one specific pathway here of getting this says what's the chance you're gonna get two correct out of six rolls? I'm gonna do this down below because I don't have much space, but you can do it wherever you want here. We're gonna work out the number of ways of getting two correct out of six, right? Two correct out of six rolls. That you already learned, right? How do you do choosing two correct, two things out of six? Six C2, right? That's what that is. Six C2 gives you the number of ways, right? And then we're going to multiply that by, we want the probability for one of the ways. Of one of the ways. If we want to get, and if it helps here, think about this, that it could be, just pick any one of them. For example, correct, correct, and then all the incorrect ones. Okay, that's, for example, one of them, right? You could rearrange them. It doesn't matter which one you pick. This could be first, whatever. We're just picking one of the ways to use and then multiplying it by the number of ways. For this, I need one-sixth times one-sixth, right, for each of those. That's that. And then for this, what do I need here? 5, 6 times 5, 6 times 5, 6 times 5, 6. Now, we don't want to, if we were doing 100 rolls, we don't want to write out that a million times. You also learned something not in grade 2, but you learned something in grade 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 that you could that you could make this simpler and you can make this simpler. So what's a simpler way to write each of those? Instead of writing 1, 6 times 1, 6, what are we going to write here? 1, 6 to the power of... Two, right? And then instead of 5, 6 to the power of 4, or <laughs> instead of that, we're going to write exactly that. <laughs> instead of 5, 6 times itself 4 times, you're going to write 5, 6 to the power of 4. Really, there's two parts to this, right? What we just said here. There's number of ways it can happen times the probability for one of the ways. If you want to think of it as three parts, if that helps... Think of it instead as three parts. You can think this is the number of ways 
This is the probability for the correct, the successes. Probability for the successes, like you being successfully correct here. And this is the probability for the, I don't know what you want to call them, the failures, the times you were not correct. That's the binomial, that's using the binomial theorem to calculate probabilities here. We're going to generalize it in a few minutes, but make sure you understand uh, in that specific context. Can you use the shortcut for the things down here? I'll stop.